Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. What do we think of when we imagine a gentle person or a meek person? Usually, we're thinking of someone who's quiet, soft-spoken. And what else? Some people would say that the gentle person is weak, maybe, or a pushover, or think that a shy person is the same thing as being a gentle person. What else? Well, let's see. We would think a gentle person would be thought of as nice, kind-hearted, understanding, and not very loud. Could a loud person also be a gentle person? Probably. How about a quiet person? What if a person is quiet? Is the, could they be a person who's not gentle? Absolutely. They might be a quiet bully. I mean, it happens. And no matter how we define it, we all want people around us, the people around us, we want them to be understanding, kind, and gentle. But what is gentleness when God uses that word in the Bible? Based on the original Greek word used in the New Testament, the word gentleness or meekness literally means strength under control. The word was used to describe a wild stallion that had been tamed or broken. The tamed stallion still had as much power and energy as when it was wild, but now it was able to control its power and its energy and could be made useful to its owners. So to be gentle doesn't mean to be weak and spineless. It means to have strength, but to have it under control. Interestingly, only two people in the Bible were called gentle or meek. One was Jesus, the other was Moses, and neither of them were weak people. Both were very strong and bold and stood their ground whenever they needed to. And since we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, and let's go back to it now, where it says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. Now, knowing that gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit and that gentleness means strength under control, we can appreciate where Philippians 4 verses 4 and 5 say, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Then it says, Let your gentle spirit be obvious to everyone. So, this means gentleness is to harness or control our reactions to people, not just lashing out or saying the first thing that comes to mind. It's choosing your own response to people rather than simply reacting to them. And being gentle isn't just saying the same mean things, but saying them in a soft, gentle voice with a sm fake smile as a cover. Being gentle has to do with recognizing that other people are just as important as you are, and that their feelings are just as real as yours are, and their needs are just as important as yours are. And that takes a definite work of the Spirit of God for most of us. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4 says, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard each other as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. So being gentle takes in mind that everybody around you also is going through their own issues, their own problems, their own pains, their own fears, just like you are, just like I am. They have good days and they have bad days. And you might have a lot of other issues going on that you don't know about, like maybe a relationship breaking up or a sick or dying loved one, or they can't pay their rent or they're losing their job, problems with their kids. You know, the same kinds of problems or worse ones than you or I might be going through. And bear that in mind with dealing with them. The second thing is this, to accept the other person even in their differences than you. Jesus said that the Pharisees accepted other Pharisees and they accepted other people who are like them. But anybody can do that. I mean, being gentle includes accepting people, even if we disagree with some of their choices and some of their ideas. I mean, it's easy to accept people who are our favorite kind of people, people with the same hobbies and they look like us and they like the same things we like. They vote the same way we vote and we can accept them readily. But guess what? Even devil worshipers could do that, find other people they like that were like them. But the Holy Spirit helps us to like, to love, and respect people who are very different different than us. When a person, any person, accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, do you know what happens? Besides them getting forgiven, they become part of your family. They become part of your fellowship. They become part of the body of Christ. And the truth is, none of us is perfect. We all need to get along. 
We need to accept each other. You know, there are a few things in human relationships that feel worse than being rejected. And there are a few things that are as encouraging as being accepted, especially by people who are very different than us and we didn't think they would accept us. I mean, if Jesus accepts us and we're very different than him, then we can, through him, accept other people. And that's why God tells us in Romans 15 and verse 7 to accept one another, even as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. It glorified God when Jesus accepted us, and it glorifies God when we each accept each other. You know, God puts up with a lot from each and every one of us. And if he puts up with our inconsistencies and weaknesses and foolishnesses, we should learn to put up with other people's shortcomings and weaknesses and foolishnesses too. And whenever we feel tempted to reject or disrespect another person, we need to stop to remember how much God has forgiven us, even when we didn't know him. I mean, God is consistently gentle with us, and he wants us to be gentle with other people. And the more we recognize God's grace to us, the more grace we'll be able to give to other people. Another part of gentleness is being a peacemaker, like we talked about a little bit about last time, you know, talking about peace as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, when someone disagrees with you, that's your call to be the peacemaker, if at all possible. Like, does it really matter if that person has a different opinion than I do or you do? Usually not. And we'll never be able to get along with everybody. We will always meet people who like to argue and find fault and quarrel with us and pick us apart. You know, some people will contradict everything you say. So how should we respond to them? Well, one test of spiritual maturity, my pastor used to say, is how we handle people who disagree with us. You know, some people have a need to devastate, annihilate everybody who disagrees with them. And if you challenge them or offer a different comparison or a complaint or a criticism, they respond with a full-blown personal attack telling you what's wrong with you. What do you do then? You have three alternatives. You can back off and leave. Just avoid that person from now on. Quit the church. Or you can attack them back, drive them out. But if you're led by the Spirit, you can respond you can respond calmly, peacefully. And the Bible tells us, as much as it is up to us, be at peace with all people. It also says to consider Jesus, who endured such contradiction of sinners. It says that in Hebrews chapter 12. So when people strongly disagree, the easiest thing to do is just back off and leave. You know, say, all right, playboy, you just hold on, you know, or we can go into the attack mode and try to get them to agree with us. That's what our flesh wants us to do. But the Holy Spirit wants us to respond as a peacemaker. And that takes gentleness, gentleness, almost like doing surgery, but on a relationship level or an emotional level. The Holy Spirit gives you the balance between maintaining your right to an opinion while equally respecting another person's right to his or her opinion, even if it's wrong. They have a right to be wrong, just like you and I do. Being a peacemaker isn't about surrendering your opinions and saying that the other person's right. It's not about that at all. It's about being at peace with them anyway. And that, again, takes gentleness and not keep bringing it up all the time. You know, gentleness is the trait you might find in a surgeon. They go in there after that cancer or that organ that needs work, but they do it gently. You know, they're not going in with a hammer and a shovel and a, I don't know, and a pick and a screwdriver. They get the job done, but with no collateral damage. That's a good example of gentleness. Proverbs 15 verse 1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. You've probably experienced that. I know I have. You know, you can be fine with somebody, but then they start getting rude or harsh and sarcastic with you. You know, it makes you want to get harsh back. You know, and I always hear these really smart answers that I could say. It's like, hey, that'd be really funny. I ought to say this or I ought to say that. But, you know, you have to learn, let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Let the Holy Spirit direct you. Let the Holy Spirit direct you to be nice instead, to be sweet. That's a fruit you know, fruit is sweet. Try to be sweet. You know, it's just really, really hard sometimes. But that's why it's the Holy Spirit and not us. James chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 say that wherever jealousy and selfish ambition are, there's disorder and every evil thing. But the wisdom from above, God's wisdom, is first pure, peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, good fruits, unwavering and without hypocrisy. So the Holy Spirit says that wise people are peaceful, pure, gentle, and friendly. 
And I know a lot of people who are very intelligent, but they're also obnoxious. They think they know it all. They're not friendly or peaceful or gentle. They go around trying to impress everybody with their knowledge and their opinions and all that. But if you're a truly wise person, you're going to be gentle. You know, gentleness is the ability to disagree in an agreeable way. Someone said that you can walk hand in hand with someone without seeing eye to eye. You know, you can agree, hey, you, you and I disagree, but we can still hang out. You know, God says in 2 Timothy 2, verse 24, that the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. If you're going to be the Lord's servant, don't be quarrelsome, but be kind to everybody, able to teach, patient when wronged, and with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. So God is saying that gentleness is a qualification for spiritual leadership. And if I'm a leader, I'm not going to get swept up and caught up in all their arguments. A fourth thing is that gentleness involves listening and hearing people out. God says in James chapter 1, verse 19, that we need to be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. I mean, if we're quick to listen, we listen readily, and we think about our answer and how it impacts the other person, it helps us to not get mad so easily. A gentle person uses their ears more than they use their mouth and are willing to accept correction. And then the fifth thing, let the Holy Spirit rule your reactions and don't let other people be your puppet master and determine what you're going to say and do. Don't let anyone take the Holy Spirit's control away from you. And you give it away the moment you start reacting when they're pushing your buttons and pulling your strings. God says in Romans 12, verse 17, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. And then down in Romans 12, verse 21, he says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's the fruit of gentleness at work in your life. You know, that's where you're declaring, nobody but Jesus is going to rule my life. Gentleness is strength under control and choosing the way we respond to people. God also says in Proverbs 16 and verse 32, that the person who is slow to anger is better than the strong and mighty person, and the person who rules their spirit is better than the one who captures a city. The person who can control their moods and responses is a strong person, and God calls that the fruit of gentleness. When you and I yield to the Holy Spirit, he gives us his gentleness. You may not have that holy hush in your voice. You may not talk in whispers, bless God. But if you take on gentleness, you will have a more relaxed lifestyle. You'll become more flexible and resilient. You'll be more able to roll with the punches. And you know, one reason so many people are on edge and tense and angry is because they're not gentle. They're always demanding everybody else think and act and believe like they do and vote like they do and respond like they do. They always have to prove their point. They're unwilling to learn from other people. They react to every situation and every comment, and they never let the Holy Spirit set their responses. So they're on edge and angry and upset. But God wants us to live out that abundant life that Jesus came to give us. And his means of doing that is to give us the fruits of the Holy Spirit to be growing in and functioning in our lives. You know, I hope this message has helped you and is a blessing in your life. Please remember to give us a thumbs up and to share this with your friends. I know that you know people who could use some of the solid Bible teaching that we offer here, and it would really bless them. All you got to do is share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I appreciate you, I pray for you, and I value your prayers for me. God bless. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org. Or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family. <laughs>